Okay, next we have quantum theory of normal Zeeman effect. <clears throat> we will explain normal Zeeman effect by using quantum theory. Suppose we have an electron which is moving in a circular orbit. Suppose this is circular or circular like a elliptical orbit. And the motion of the electron is clockwise. This electron is moving in this circular orbit or I can write it is like this. Suppose we have this electron which is moving in this orbit uh, of radius r in clockwise direction. This is the motion of the electron. Now the orbital angular momentum will be perpendicular to the plane of this orbit. So it will be perpendicular, let's suppose this is the center of this orbit, then this orbital angular momentum direction will be this one. This is the direction of orbital angular momentum. Orbital angular momentum direction can, we can calculate by from, from this equation. This relation L is equal to R cross P. Uh, R cross MV. M is constant, so keep it outside. We have R cross V. By right hand rule, apply right hand rule to this R cross V, this vector product. We get the direction of orbital angular momentum its direction is upward because the velocity is downward this is the radius so you can calculate it by right hand rule now this orbital angular momentum is perpendicular to the plane of the orbit and since electron is moving clockwise so the conventional current will be anti-clockwise the direction of conventional current will be anti-clockwise direction because conventional current is always taken to be in the opposite direction of electron. Now once there is a current then due to this current there will be a magnetic field. So if there is a magnetic field then the upper part of the this circular loop uh, uh, the upper phase of this loop behave as a this upper part behave as a south pole and this lower part behave as a north pole so we have both south and north pole and we know that so once there is a magnetic field, so it means that there is a magnetic dipole moment and also there is a magnetic moment. So the magnetic moment, which I represent by mu L, which is associated with the orbital motion of electron to its angular momentum is given by this relation. We already derived this relation. Mu L is equal to minus E divided by 2 M into L. This is the relation for the magnetic moment. I can't remember in which video we calculate this relation but we already derived this expression, the expression for the magnetic moment. Uh, atom behave like a magnetic moment, dipole moment. So where we ex calculate this relation, its value is mu L which is E minus E divided by 2m times L. Now if you look at here, Direction, the direction of magnetic, magnetic moment, this mu L, is opposite to the direction of angular momentum. So if the direction of angular momentum is this one, then the magnetic moment direction will be downward. This is the direction of magnetic moment, mu L. Now, now, we apply an external magnetic field which is in the z direction. So this is my z direction here. In this direction I applied an external magnetic field B which makes an angle theta with this angular momentum vector L is theta. Now 
we know that the potential energy of a magnetic dipole placed in a magnetic field which is applied in the z direction which is applied in the z direction is given by this relation the potential energy vm which is equal to minus mu l dot b or we can write it as vm the potential energy due to magnetic field stored in this dipole magnetic dipole is minus mu l b cos of theta this is equation number one and this is equation number two you can write it more clearly v m is equal to minus mu l b cos of theta this is obvious for example we have a dipole electric dipole two equal and opposite charges if we place in an external magnetic field electric field sorry then this dipole if this is positive and this is positive this is negative sorry then electric field originates from positive to negative so there is a rotation this dipole rotate and it rotate in such a way that it's ally itself in the direction of this electric field so during this rotation we are doing work this there is a work so the work then is stored in the form of potential energy similarly when a magnetic dipole is placed in, in a magnetic field it also rotate in such a way that it's ally itself in the direction of magnetic field so there is a work done and that work done is stored in the form of potential energy which is given by this relation vm is equal to minus mu l dot b our vm is equal to minus mu l b cos of theta let's say this equation number two now using equation one and two we have the relation for the potential due to magnetic field is now minus e divided by sorry minus into minus there are two minus one minus is this one one minus is that one e divided by 2m l into b cos of theta or from this we get the value of vm which is equal to minus minus we get plus so we have e divided by 2m and we have l b cos of theta now from quantum mechanics we know that this orbital angular momentum l is equal to l steric cos of theta no, sorry l steric into h bar where l steric basically l into l plus 1 square root so we can write it as l is equal to the magnitude of l l into l plus 1 into h bar this factor i call l steric this factor so this is let's say equation number 4 and this is equation 3 yes this is equation 3 this is equation 4 Now, using equation four and three, we have if we put equation four and three, then we get V M is equal to we have e divided by two M. instead of this orbital angular momentum l we put l steric h bar and we have b cos of theta uh, i can write it is vm is equal to e divided by 2m and we have h bar which i replaced by h over 2 pi And we have b and i write this l steric with cos theta 
Now we will calculate the value of this quantity. Now according to Lormer's theorem, suppose this is an electron moving in anti-clockwise clockwise way and this is the value of L orbital angular momentum and here we have the external magnetic field B for this figure. Same I re replace it, uh, represent it here. Then according to Lormor's theorem, this L precess around B. It precess around B like this. This is theta. So it's precess like this. If I take a perpendicular, then the projection of this orbital angular momentum in the direction of this magnetic field here is represented by ML. I call this vector, this from here to here, this is L steric. This is the magnitude of this L. Then this is theta, this is ML, this is L, this is now base, this is now hypotenuse. So we have base over, over hypotenuse L steric is cos theta. A ML, this is L steric. ML is equal to L steric cos of theta. So we can write it here that ML is equal to L steric cos of theta. Using this value above, we get Vm is equal to E divided by 2m, H divided by 2 pi, B into ML. I can write it as Vm is equal to E H over 4 pi M into B into ML. But we know that E H over 4 pi M is, is equal to mu B. And this is Bohr magneton. So we have this potential Vm stored in the electron due to external magnetic field as now mu B we have B into ML. I can write it as more clearly Vm is equal to mu B B into ML. Now here I will just remind you that the value of ML varies from minus L to plus L. So this is let's say equation number 5. Now this equation shows the potential stored in a magnetic dipole placed in an external magnetic field. Now Now I will explain this equation. Suppose we have two energy levels. Suppose we have two energy levels. One is, I call it EI, E naught I and the other one is E naught F. This is the case when there is no magnetic field. B is equal to zero. So when electron jump, let's suppose electron is in this higher energy states, when it jump from higher energy states like this E naught I to lower energy states to this E naught F, it emits radiation energy in the form of radiation. Or in the form of radiation, 
and this emitted energy in the form of radiation which I call it H nu naught. This emitted radiation or this energy is equal to the difference in energy of the two energy level E naught I minus E naught F. So this emitted energy is equal to the difference in energy of the two energy level H naught nu. This is the electromagnetic radiation emitted is equal to the difference in energy of the two energy level. So higher energy minus lower energy. Where E0 represent the energy state when magnetic field is zero. So I can write it as H nu naught is equal to E naught I minus E naught F. Or from this I can get nu naught is equal to E naught I minus E naught F over H. Now this is the frequency, this nu naught is the frequency of line emitted when there is no external field, magnetic field. When magnetic field is zero. <coughs> now in the presence of its magnetic field, when magnetic field is applied to the atom, then we have, apart from this energy, we have this energy also stored in the atom, the potential energy. So the total energy now in the presence of magnetic field is total energy is now E, I call it E, which is equal to the energy of the atom when magnetic field is zero plus the potential energy V. <coughs> we are E naught, I will write it again, E naught is the energy. of atom when B is equal to 0 <coughs> and Vm is the potential energy stored when B is applied, when magnetic field B is applied. <coughs> so this E is equal to E naught <coughs> plus <coughs> Vm value is given here in this equation which is mu L B into ML. <coughs> 